next day i'm going to give you a little tour of the guidelines this is going to be more of a demo but the websites are available if you feel free you want to go on the u d l center but i'll give you the tour just to ground you in the guidelines and remember these are it's one page but behind this one page is a great deal of information and numerous resources that you can use for your planning so we're going to kind of give you the little quick tour um, as david mentioned this morning the one page is structured so engagement appears last that will change in the next version and i did take the liberty to change it in some icon representation here yes it says oh good okay great uh, so let's go through the guidelines now the next thing is going to appear rather strange because david is sitting over there at the table but i'm going to show a video of david talking about the guidelines <laughs> and <laughs> so if we don't like it but we, but the reason i'm doing that that's right that's right you can do it no anxiety um, the reason i'm doing that is so that you'll know this is a resource because people are going back to their schools to their universities and they've asked on the uh, illuminate what are the resources that are available there are a number of resources that you have and anything that's posted either on our site the cast site or on the national center you feel free to use and just share the resources so i just have a couple of little goals we talk about the relevance of goals so this is what we want to accomplish in this next 40 minutes is we want to understand how the guidelines are organized and i'm going to focus on multiple means of um, engagement and then it's a pattern once you figure that one out then you can figure out how to navigate through multiple means of uh, rec uh, representation and multiple means of action and expression. And the other uh, is we're going to actually apply the guidelines to practice. And these are activities that, again, when you're sharing with your colleagues, you might want to just use them, tweak them, make them your own. So here I said, uh, here is David. This is a little video. And on this particular PowerPoint, all of the links are on the individual screen. So when you want to get to them, they'll be on Illuminate, and you can just hook up to them. If you want to go on now, you feel free, but uh, I'm going to do this in a demo. So let's make sure we're hearing David. And what David is just to alert you, David's going to be talking about the structure of the guidelines. The unfortunate thing is this appears linear, which in fact it is not. Also, please note that the... Um, document that he is pointing to looks a little different than the document that you have. Much like what we learned from the neurosciences, we're constantly learning and being informed. The version that David talked about, probably about six months ago, we since realized we had to revise it. So on the copy that you have, so just ground yourself on that for a minute, I want to highlight a couple of the critical uh, changes. One is that there's um, arrows pointing downward. And you'll hear why that's done. The next is what David says in the video, we're critiquing it already, is the bottom three cells are where we want students to be. Our language has changed a little bit, is that when we think about expert learners, we're thinking about the bottom three cells differently, but expert learners are characterized by what falls below the bottom cells, resourceful, knowledgeable learners, strategic, goal-directed learners, and purposeful, motiv motivated learners. And that is how we're defining an expert learner. And the guidelines are intended to help us get to that point. So now I'll let David talk about the structure. Oops. In spite of difficulties. Sorry. But the top of that hierarchy. Here we go. I want to make a general comment about the guidelines. Okay. Typically, and in the video that uh, you'll be seeing, we tend to go vertically talking about uh, perceptions and language and symbols and then comprehension. Um, and it has a feeling of uh, inching your way through, uh, through the guidelines, through the uh, checkpoints. Um, but I want to talk a little bit more globally, uh, which is to say that 
Actually, the goal of UDL is along this horizontal, the bottom of the um, table here, options for comprehension, for executive functions, and self-regulation. But this is where we want to end up. This is where we want kids to be. That is, that they comprehend whatever is in front of them. They have good strategies. They know what to do. Similarly, they have great executive function. They make good plans, set goals for themselves that are appropriate, and monitor their progress. And lastly, similarly, in engagement, the affective domain, that they are, in fact, uh, able to self-regulate. It's not that they have to be stimulated by the outside world, that they're in charge of how uh, things interest them and what they engage in and what they're willing to put effort in. So this is the place we want to get to. And the other guidelines are, in fact, um, really part of getting there. We do need to make sure that everybody can perceive the world from which they're going to learn. And whatever is put in language and symbols, we need that to be uh, interpretable by the individuals. But it's really to get to comprehension that we want to do that. In some way, we certainly want every child to be able to act on the world and to be able to be skillful in things like communication, to be able to write and speak and so on and so forth. But the top of this is really to get to executive functions where they can plan a good essay or a good speech make it, deliver it, monitor their progress, and so on. So it's to get to executive functions that these others are critical. And lastly, on multiple means of engagement, um, at the beginning, it's how do we recruit interest? But that's too external. Um, we move a little higher and we say, how do the kids learn to sustain um, engagement and persist in spite of difficulties? But the top of that hierarchy is really how do kids set good goals, personal goals, about development for themselves? How do they cope? Um, and how do they reflect on their own development and their own engagement? So when you think about the uh, guidelines, certainly the, there are, are three main principles. And there's a verticality that goes literally from the outside in. So these are things that have to do with perception on the outside. These things have to do with physical action on the outside. These things to do with how we engage from the outside. But as you move down to this final role, it's all about the kids themselves. It's internal. The kid is what's driving. So what we want to do is get to that. Uh, students who are independent, self-directed, uh, self-actualizing learners. So. In an odd way, the guidelines go outside, in. Um, each of them do that. And here's where we want to end up. Thanks. Thank you, David. <laughs> he needs a new coat. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So again, uh, paying attention to the guidelines. And now we're going to spend a few moments deconstructing this document so that you'll feel very comfortable uh, navigating on your own. So uh, we're going to, as I said, deconstruct. There is the principle level. And the principle level are the three principles. And they're very tightly connected to what uh, David talked about this morning with the neurosciences. Multiple means of recognition, which is the what of learning. And what I'd like you to be doing now is thinking about how does this apply to my practice? What are my takeaways? So really think about, think about your classrooms, think about what you do in your professional life. Multiple means of action and expression, the how of learning, and then multiple means of engagement, the why of learning. That is the principle level. From the principles, we go to the guideline level. Under each principle, and you can look at your document that you're looking at, there are three guidelines. Um, I'm not going to read them. You can read the board. You can refer to yours. Uh, we're going to focus on multiple means of engagement. Remember, David said from access, from external to internal. So many of our assistive technologies support external. So when you look at the questions, that, when you look at the top row across, you can think about your assistive technologies. And people often ask, how, are a how is AT connected to UDL? Just look at the guidelines. Look right across and say, these are where the assistive technologies come in. And then we have the checkpoint level. So we have principles, 
guidelines, checkpoints. And you can see this more clearly on your document, is it's all of these little 1.1. Uh, there was, I was um, on a professional development trip, and I came back to the staff one time, and on the lunch table, there were these signs around, do away with the numbers, we want the numbers, and it took me a few moments to figure out, what is that all about? Much discussion at CAS goes along with the numbers. But I can easily say to you, OK, we're referring to 7.1. The numbers do not suggest a level of importance. But it does suggest a way that we can navigate. But there is discussion about what we're doing with these numbers. OK, so uh, the guidelines are available on the National Center website, uh, www.udlcenter.org. And just to highlight what you should look at is there is a link in very small print. Again, if you want to go online and follow along, feel free, or just this is actually a little demonstration. It's UDL guidelines. And the reason I'm pointing this out, it's a little uh, dense to navigate. So you just have to really figure out, and you'll have these slides. So uh, just. Grace, I've also put a direct link on the wiki to the guidelines. Perfect. Thank you. OK? And then once you go into the UDL guidelines, it's um, apologetically, I'm going to say it's very text heavy. And uh, we often uh, will jigsaw this. So if you go back to study groups and you want to work with schools, do a little jigsaw about you be responsible for reading the introduction, you be responsible for doing this. Because it really is a lot of information. But this is what will happen when you get to the uh, main page. And again, just highlighting the critical features so that you'll know your eye can go to the right navigation bar at any point and you can easily navigate to guideline one, Principle one, principle two, principle three. We're going to have a test at the end of this to make sure you remember all that I've said. Uh, again, this is just the quick little. We're getting into this page looks exactly the same, except if you pay attention, it, you have a different flow of now what's highlighted. Uh, let me just see here. What's highlighted is we're in multiple means of engagement. I've navigated that through my uh, right hand nav bar. Every guideline is, every principle, I'm sorry, is set up the same way. A little introduction, and then we go specifically into each of the guidelines. Again, I just am letting you know this is where we are, principle three, multiple means of engagement. And now we're into each of the individual um, guidelines as such. So if you go into the guideline, and as I said, guideline seven is provide options for recruiting interest. Underneath each of the guidelines is a checkpoint. Guidelines eight, this is external to internal. Guideline eight is providing options for sustaining effort and persistence, each of the checkpoints. And guideline nine, options for self-regulation. Now, I want to highlight something. When you go into the checkpoints, I, we all have our favorites of whatever. But my favorite, actually, in this whole thing, and I tried to have it pop right up on the front page, but my favorite is the tell me more. Because the tell me more gives an educator an idea of what does this really look like in practice. And what we often do in a professional development activity is say, OK, look at the tell me more. 